Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the vehicle body node in Godot and exploring how it can help us create a car controller like this from the ground up. This tutorial will include an overview of the settings for both vehicle body and vehicle wheel nodes that can help you tune your car and suspension to your liking, as well as all of the code you would need to set up your car movement and a walkthrough of creating a racing camera system. So let's get right into this. We're gonna start off by finding the car Model that we want to use. I got mine from Polypizza, link in the description, and right clicking and selecting new inherited scene. Save this scene and then right click on the root node and select clear inheritance so we have access to all of the children nodes. After that we can change the type of the root node to a vehicle body, which is basically a rigid body with a lot of added functionality that simplifies everything for us. Just like a rigid body, it needs a collision shape, so we're going to select the car body mesh go into its mesh menu and click create single convex collision sibling. That looks good, but beside a collision shape, a vehicle body needs vehicle wheels. So let's hide the body for now, and just so that we don't need to reposition them, let's add vehicle wheels as children of the wheel meshes to begin. Rename this one to back left, and drag it to be the parent of the wheel mesh instead. We're going to repeat the same process for all of the wheels, and while we do that, let's talk about how the vehicle body works. Under the hood, the wheels don't have collision shapes of their own, but rather apply forces to the vehicle body depending on whether they are touching the ground and if they have traction. You can think of the vehicle body as a hoverboard and the wheels as the thrusters that both push it up against the gravity and propel it forward. One notable difference though is that when the wheels lose grip with the road and the car starts drifting, we don't apply our forward and lateral forces as efficiently. Even though it might sound weird, this implementation works pretty well for anything short of a hardcore racing simulator. Let's take a look at our vehicle body. I'm going to keep the mass as is just because we can scale the other values to it, but to make our car handle better we're going to change the center of mass later. One problem with the vehicle body is that it doesn't have a downforce setting which means that at higher speeds the wheels tend to lose traction a lot so we will have to compensate by raising the gravity scale. Now for the wheels we'll be editing the back wheel and the front wheel settings separately. Select the back wheels and turn on the use as traction setting for them. This means that when we accelerate, these are the wheels that push us forward. Next, select the front wheels and turn on use as steering, which means that when we tell the car to turn, these wheels will automatically rotate and transfer our momentum in that direction. Next is roll influence and the lower this setting is, the less likely the car is to roll over on sharp turns. The default is too high for me, so so I'll set it to 0.01. The vehicle body also implements a pretty robust suspension model, and rest length is how far down from its current origin the wheel will sit by default, and I kinda like 0.2 for this car. Now friction slip is pretty important. It determines how much grip the wheel has, which affects how well steering wheels transfer our momentum, and how effective traction wheels are at pushing the car forward. The tooltip says that the values combined with the friction setting of the surface the wheel is on, which I don't think is accurate because in my testing of different physics materials on surfaces, the friction slip is the only thing that mattered. Basically friction slip, set it too low and the car will be sluggish, and set it too high and the car will be too arcadey. We'll set it at 1.4 for the front wheels. Now back to the back wheels, we'll set the roll influence to 0.01 as well, change our rest length to 0.2, and for our car to be able to drift, we want to set our back wheel friction slip slightly lower than it is on the front wheels. In the suspension section, we have some more goodies. First one is travel, which determines the maximum length the wheels will go up or down. We'll set it to 0.15. The stiffness is how strongly the wheels counteract being pushed up or pulled down, which makes the car bounce less, and the default setting is really low. So we'll increase the back stiffness to 80, and then the front stiffness to 120. Finally, let's add a camera to the car controller. Let's bring it back behind the vehicle and then in the transform section, rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. Bring it up and then click preview to see how it will look in game. Let's fine tune it a little by rotating it on the X axis and checking how it looks. I feel like we could bring it up a little more and then set the X rotation to negative 10. That's how our camera will look for now and it's time to write some code. Let's attach a script to the player 
check that it's in the right place and click create. The first thing we're going to do is create a constant for how much our wheels will turn in radians called max steer. We'll set it to 0.8 which is 45 degrees. Next in the process function we will set the steering variable of the vehicle body by getting the result of the input get axis function and passing it our left and right inputs. This will return 1 for the right input, negative 1 for the left input and 0 for none or both inputs at the same time. Then multiply it by the max steer and this will rotate our wheels 45 degrees either to the left or the right. Problem is wheels don't turn instantaneously so we will wrap this inside the move toward function which takes our original value the target value and then the amount to move it by every step of the process function which will set to delta times 2.5 next to propel the car forward we set the engine force to the combination of our up and down inputs multiplied by the engine power which should depend on the vehicle weight and how fast we want our car to go and in this case we'll set it to 300. Just for consistency let's also make this a constant. And one thing to note about engine force is that it's applied per traction wheel. We have two traction wheels on this car but if we had all four we would only need 150 engine force for the same result. Finally to make sure that we can't see our mouse cursor in game type input.set mouse mode to input.mouse mode captured in the ready function. And that's pretty much all the code that we need to get the car moving moving thanks to the vehicle body node. A lot of the other work we'll do here is getting the camera movement right because that's very important and fine tuning the handling of the car. So let's pop the vehicle into our level and see how it performs. Overall this is a pretty good starting point but it doesn't really handle turns really well or have good stability. And both issues we can solve by moving the center of mass of the car to be a bit more realistic. We won't be covering making the level in this video, but if you'd like to make something similar, you can check out my full level design tutorial and my grid map tutorial at the end of the video. Let's change the center of mass of the car. Go into the center of mass mode on the vehicle body and select custom. This will prompt us to provide the coordinates for our new center of mass, and we can figure those out visually by creating a new node 3D and moving it to where we want the center of mass to be. Since most cars have their engine in the front, it means that most of their mass will be concentrated there. And by moving the center of mass of our simulated car closer to our steering wheels, we improve our handling significantly because physics. physics. So now that we have our node 3D positioned, we can look at its transform section to see its coordinates, and let's round these to have nice numbers. And after that's done, we can just go back to our vehicle body settings and copy those values over. Now going back, to the game this improves our stability on jumps and gives a good balance between car handling and realism. If you'd like your car to handle even better on turns, a good way to do it is to increase the friction slip values on the wheels. What we're going to do here though is start working on our camera system. Right now our camera is attached to the car but instead we want it to follow the car. And thankfully there's an easy way we can do this. First we're going to parent our camera to a new Note 3D that we can use as a pivot to rotate the the camera around the car. We're going to leave this node at the car's origin or whatever point you want to rotate the camera around and move the camera to be its child. Then we can control drag the nodes into the code to quickly create on ready variables for them. Then go into the pivots transform settings and tick the top level setting which will disconnect the pivots transform from the car transform. Basically meaning that when the car moves and rotates the pivot and all of its children will stay in place. Now we still want it to follow the car but we want to smooth out any bumps or sudden movements that the car undergoes so we're instead going to lerp or linear interpolate the global position of the pivot towards the global position of the car. We're basically saying hey each frame let's move the camera towards the car this percent of the way. And finally to avoid any camera jitters we want to make sure that we only move the camera with the physics process since the car is a physics object and moves with it. So now when we start the game our camera follows the car like it's supposed to but I noticed that we got a little overzealous with the suspension on the back so let's quickly raise the back stiffness to a hundred. Select the back wheels and change the stiffness value. Back in the code we want to make sure that the pivot rotates with the car as well and to do that we are going to interpolate the transform of the pivot which includes its rotation using the interpolate with function. It's basically lerp for transforms so just like with linear interpolation the function takes a target value which in this case will be our 
our cars transform and a decimal percent distance we will cover each frame. Now in game the camera smoothly rotates with the car like it's supposed to but I feel like we can make it even more dynamic by making the camera look in the direction where we're going. For that we have the camera look at function which just rotates the camera to face a point in space. In this case we'll look at the global position of the car plus its linear velocity which amounts to where the car will be in one second. Now we want to find a way to use linear interpolation for this because it's our best friend when it comes to moving the camera. To do that we'll create a variable that we will linear interpolate towards the car position plus its velocity and then just pass that variable to the look at function. And this is really worth it because not smoothing the camera movement especially with our velocity changing so much would cause a lot of jitters. A quick before and after just for comparison. One final thing I'd like to do here is add a reverse camera because right now when we try reversing well it ain't pretty. So we're gonna go back to the 3D view of our car and duplicate our camera. Then we can move it in front of the car and set its rotation to zero. Then click on preview just to check it looks okay. Once we're satisfied with the position of the camera, untick the current setting on the reverse camera to make sure that we start with the forward facing camera active. Then in the code, control drag the new camera in to create an unready variable and set its look at direction in the physics process just like for our our original camera. After that we'll create a new function that will check whether we need to switch from one camera to the other. To do that we're going to need to figure out whether we are moving forwards or backwards and we obviously have our linear velocity to help out with that. Problem is the linear velocity is global so it tells us where we're moving in relation to the world but not in relation to ourselves. What we can do however is find the angle between our linear velocity and the forward vector of the car by using dot product. If the angle between the velocity and the forward vector is less than 90 degrees, it means we're moving forward, and if it's more than 90 degrees, then we're moving backward. And conveniently, if the dot product is more than zero, then that angle is less than 90 degrees, which means that we're moving forward and our forward camera needs to be active. And otherwise, we're moving backwards and our reverse camera needs to be active. And with that, once we start the game, everything works like before, except when we start reversing, the views switches to our new camera. And with that, we have a pretty robust car ready to go for whatever racing game you want to make. If you'd like to save yourself some time or just want to play around with the project that I made for this tutorial, all of the project files and code are available to my patrons, link in the description. If you'd like to learn how to design a level similar to this in Godot, check out these two tutorials and I'll see you next time.